Hey everybody, just wanted to make another quick video uh, talking about one node that can improve the performance of almost any shader, and that is the Vertex Interpolator. What the Vertex Interpolator does is performs calculations on the Vertex shader instead of the pixel shader. This can be helpful because in almost every case, you're going to have more pixels on the screen for given material than you are going to have vertices for that given object. So the idea is that if you can run the calculation on each vertex and then interpolate the values between those vertices, the total cost of performing that shader instruction will be lower than if you calculated uh, on a pixel by pixel basis. There are certain cases where this can be really useful and can improve performance, sometimes a little bit, sometimes a lot. And there's other cases where it can have a significant detriment to your visual quality. And so using it when it's appropriate is critical to get the best value out of this without hurting the quality of your shader. So to take a look at this in action, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up this texture to this table mesh so we can see that now there's this um, this noise, I guess we'll call it. Um, it's the macro variation texture um, with the sample materials just to give some per pixel detail so we can see very easily that there's texture across the entire mesh. If we go ahead and take our vertex interpolator and put this between our texture sample and our output color, we will get this. And so you can see what's happening here really easily. At each vertex in the mesh, the value is being calculated for this texture sample and output to the base color. And in between each vertex, it's just interpolating the difference. So in areas with very low poly counts, you get this really low resolution, horrible looking texture. And in areas with more detail, you would get more um, values to interpolate between, and it would look a little more detailed. Uh, but ultimately, you know, you really aren't going to want to use this with a texture sample by itself. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. So uh, where can you use this? If you, if you aren't gonna use it with a texture sample, uh, you can use this in places where you know the value between two vertices is going to generally be linear uh, and therefore you can interpolate between them. Uh, so generally you're going to want to use this on math operations that don't need per pixel details uh, or where you know that all of the changes in those values are going to occur on or near a vertice. So in this particular setup here, I've got uh, a couple of places that I'm going to put the vertex interpolator. But first, let's go ahead and go into our optimization view mode, and we're going to go to the shader complexity. And so what we've got here is our graph. And at the bottom here, you can see PS, this is the pixel shader, and VS for the vertex shader. And it's actually giving you a breakdown of how much of the shader complexity is being driven by each of these components. So if we go ahead and take these instructions, and I'm just going to throw them through the vertex interpolator. And we're going to apply this. You can see that the vertex shader shifted slightly to the right the pixel shader shifted slightly to the left. In this particular case, the material is really simple and there isn't a whole lot to be gained by doing this. And so the difference is gonna be small, but I went ahead and before recording, tested it by using a color sample here. So essentially I just went in and I hit the um, eyedropper and hovered it over and what I came up with here is we can see that this is the 
value before running the vertex interpolator, um, which is 0 0.768151. And here is the value after running the vertex interpolators, 0 0.783538. So, and keep in mind that in the case of the shader complexity, the higher this value, the brighter the color is. And the brighter the color is, the less complicated your shader is. So essentially, this um, is a, just a quick way you can potentially read how much of a difference there is between your uh, shader complexities if you're having a hard time distinguishing the colors just by color alone, since they can look really similar. So uh, at least in cases like this where the, uh, the benefit is really small, the more complicated your shader is, the more instructions you have, uh, you know, that you're running on the pixel shader, the more you can benefit by doing this. That said, uh, this doesn't work in every case. And so if we go back to our lit mode here, we can see that, that the visual quality of the table hasn't been degraded at all by using the vertex interpolator. And if we go ahead and get rid of it again, we can see that there's no visual change, uh, but we were able to slightly reduce the complexity of our shader in this particular instance. Uh, so back to the instances where this doesn't really work uh, would be something that is already running on the vertex shader. Uh, that might seem obvious, but it isn't always because some nodes you might not realize are already running on the vertex shader. So uh, for example, the vertex interpolator can't be put into anything that's running into a world position offset because the world position offset is already occurring on the vertex, right? You can't offset a pixel because, you know, we need a vertice there to move, right? Not, you can't move the point between two vertices. So the vertex interpolator does not work on the uh, world position offset. Um, there are another handful of nodes that it doesn't work with. Uh, for example, the uh, Fresnel node. Because once again, that's actually happening on a vertex level. But there, you know, so essentially, if you get that error message saying that um, that it's on the whole or domain shader, it means it's already on the vertex shader, and you can't interpolate through it. So uh, you would you would get no benefit. It just doesn't make any sense. But anything that's running on the pixel shader, you should be asking yourself: Does this need per pixel detail, or? is per vertex detail acceptable. And if per vertex detail is acceptable with minimal to no loss in quality, then you can improve the performance. So that's just about all there is to in far as far as the basic goes. Uh, there's a couple of other things you might want to consider. One is that uh, this isn't going to work very well with Nanite. So looking forward to the future with Unreal Engine 5, that's something to be aware of. There's a couple of factors that make vertex interpolators not really a great fit with Nanite. One is I found that in some cases, certain parts of it just simply don't work uh, in the way that you would expect them or at all. Uh, another is that because the vertices on a Nanite mesh are constantly shifting, you're not going to have a stable level of detail to interpolate values on, which is another thing to consider. Right? With the vertex interpolator, the more vertices something has, the more detail uh, the calculations are going to be and uh, you're performing on. And the, the less detail you have, the, the sparser those calculations are. So as an LOD shifts on a mesh, for example, you could potentially see a popping in or out of detail uh, on those shader calculations that you wouldn't see if that was being performed on a pixel level. So that's something to be aware of as well, is if you, if you are doing something with this that is going to be impacted by LEDs, uh, 
you know, you, you just might want to test that transition and see does this cause a noticeable pop um, in my shader's appearance as I transition from one detail to another. But that brings us back to why this isn't a good fit for Nanite, which is that Nanite is constantly changing the um, level of detail on a small level. So you're much more likely to see these pops where the vertex either comes into existence or goes out of existence. And depending on what values you're interpolating between, that could give some undesirable results. So ultimately, that's something to just consider. You can always test it, see how things work, and if it improves your shader. But uh, that's really all I have for now. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw them into the comments. And thanks for watching.